Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're asked to prove the statement using the precise definition of a limit, and we have the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to 1. So the precise definition of a limit states that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l if for every epsilon greater than 0 that we could pick, there's an associated delta greater than 0 such that 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, and the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So what we have to do here is plug in our values for this particular problem. a is the value which x is approaching, so that's 2. So 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta. And we can specify that we don't care that it's greater than 0, because if the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than 0, this is basically saying that the um, x minus 2 itself is not equal to 0, because the only other numbers that are being restricted by this are negative numbers, which we know that the absolute value of something is already not equal to. So therefore, x is not equal to 2 is the only restriction, and we're looking at the limit as x approaches 2, not the actual behavior at 2. So we can simply say that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta. f of x is x squared minus 4x plus 5. l is the value of the limit, so minus 1. And this is less than epsilon. Therefore, the absolute value of x squared minus 4x plus 4 is less than epsilon. And this is the absolute value of x minus 2 times x minus 2 is less than epsilon. This is the absolute value of x minus 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2, right? We can separate them within the absolute value. And what we want here is we want x minus 2 on one side and delta on another, x minus 2 on one side and epsilon on the other. However, if we were to divide by x minus 2 to solve for this x minus 2, we'd have x's on both sides and it would get really confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a, um, get another, um, variable c. I'm going to say this is some c, positive c, such that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than c. If this is true, then multiplying both sides of this um, equation by the absolute value of x minus 2, we get that the absolute value of x minus 2 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than c times the absolute value of x minus 2. And we can make it so that c times the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon by saying that we can say that this is true by saying that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than epsilon over c. And again, we don't need to know what c is, we're just saying these are the rules by which we have created this c. And therefore, x minus 2 is less than delta, x minus 2 is less than epsilon over c, therefore delta equals epsilon over c. Problem solved? Well, no, because this is in terms of c, which isn't super helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that delta is some small number 1, right? So therefore, um, the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta, therefore it's less than 1. Therefore, if the um, absolute value of x minus 2 is less than c, and it's less than 1, then we can set c to be equal to 1. Um, and again, it doesn't matter what you pick, it just has to, you know, get a bound um, centered around 2, and it, we just picked a distance of 1. And that creates c being equal to 1, which means delta is equal to e, or sorry, epsilon over 1, epsilon, therefore delta is equal to epsilon for this particular um, value. So if we are looking at the range of values that are one away from the function, from the value of x is equal to 2, then delta is equal to epsilon. If it is epsilon is smaller than 1, then that's just what our epsilon is going to be. However, if our epsilon is greater than 1, then it becomes the less restrictive bound, right? So if we're looking at our function, right, say we have this function, and we're looking at this point. So we pick two bounds that correspond with different values of the function. And this is the bound in which we're looking at. If we instead look at 
a shorter bound that's going to be more restrictive. So we have to go with the more restrictive bound is what I mean here. And so we say that delta is equal to the minimum of 1 and epsilon. Because this is the epsilon, um, this is the value of delta, given that delta is equal to 1. So you can say that either it's equal to 1, or it's equal to epsilon, whatever the smaller one is, the more restrictive one that is, that is our value of delta. And since we are able to find the delta for any epsilon, then we can say that the limit is true.